good learning now we are discussing about the bending of beams a beam is defined as a rod or a bar having uniform cross section the cross section may be either circular or rectangular whatever it may be and this uniform bar or bar of uniform cross section is homogeneous it should be homogeneous it should be isotropic elastic material and the length of this bar is very much greater than the other dimensions such as the breadth or the diameter like that so that the shearing stress for any cross section is negligible is negligible now a beam the beam that we have defined over here a beam is nothing but a rod of uniform cross section which is homogeneous and isotropic elastic material whose length is very much larger than the other dimensions such as the breadth the thickness the radius etc and the shearing stress or any cross section is negligible if such a beam is supported at one end and loaded at the other end or loaded at the other free end is called cantilever and this is cantilever and this is a uniform rod loaded at the free end and fixed to a rigid support at the other end and this we call it as the cantilever and this beam is considered to be made up of large number of thin horizontal layers as shown in this figure this rod is considered to be made up of number of such layers i have shown only uh, three layers in this figure it will have number of such layers and each layer consists of number of thin parallel horizontal metallic fibers kept side by side as shown in the figure and these metallic fibers these metallic thin horizontal fibers are called longitudinal filaments are called longitudinal filaments these lines are called longitudinal filaments which are thin metallic fibers kept horizontal and when a straight bar is bent when such a beam is bent the outer layers of the beam gets elongated whereas whereas the inner layers of the beam gets contracted and there is a layer at the middle of both the outer and the inner layers and that layer will neither be elongated nor be contracted and that layer which, which neither contracted nor elongated is called the neutral surface is called the neutral neutral surface the line of intersection of neutral surface and the plane of bending is called the neutral axis the line of intersection of neutral surface and the plane of bending is called the neutral axis neutral axis now let us discuss about the bending moment in order to find the bending moment we consider a small area delta a shown over here delta a lying at a distance x lying at a distance x from the neutral axis ef this is the neutral axis ef from the neutral axis ef we have considered a small area delta a which is at a distance x from the neutral axis ef the force acting on this area is f is equal to stress into da stress into delta a is the force acting on the small area or f is equal to q into x by capital r into delta a where q into x by capital r is called the stress now moment of force about this axis ef is moment of force about this axis ef is equal to f into x that is therefore equal to q x square by capital r into delta a 
f into x a is the moment of force acting on delta a about the axis ef since the moments of the forces acting on the upper and the lower halves of the section of the neutral axis are in the same direction so the moments of forces acting on the upper and lower halves of the section about the neutral axis are in the same direction and therefore the total moment is the total moment is given by the expression sigma q x square delta a by capital r that is equal to q by r into sigma delta a into x square now therefore bending moment is q a k square by r q a k square by r is the bending moment where k square is nothing but the radius of gyration of this abcd radius of gyration of abcd and the same abcd you can see here abcd and this abcd has bent the outer layer gets elongated the the inner layer gets contracted and there is a middle layer which which with neither elongated nor contracted and this middle layer is called the neutral surface neutral surface now and a is called the area of cross section of the beam small a is called area of cross section k square is called radius of gyration the quantity a into k square is called the geometrical moment of inertia represented by ig therefore ig equals a k square moment of inertia of the section abcd about the neutral surface ef therefore q a k square by r can be rewritten as q by r into ig since a k square is ig therefore bending moment is bending moment is q into ig by r q into ig by r we have special cases if the beam is erect, is of rectangular cross section having breadth b and thickness d then area of cross section is a equals b into d and radius of gyration for this rectangular cross section is given by d square by 12 therefore geometrical moment of inertia is ig equals a k square that is equal to b d q by 12 b d q by 12 is the moment of inertia that to the geometrical moment of inertia of a rectangle of rectangular cross section of a rectangular beam having breadth b and thickness d similarly the geometrical moment of inertia of a circular cross sectional beam if the beam is of circular cross section having radius r having radius r then area of cross section of the beam is pi r square and radius of gyration of that beam is k square equals r square by 4 therefore geometrical moment of inertia of a beam of circular cross section is ig equals a k square that is therefore equal to pi r power 4 by 4 and bending of the beam is directly proportional to q called young's modulus of the material the quantity q into q into ig that is equal to q a square q a k square is called the flexural rigidity of the beam q into ij otherwise known as q a k square called the flexural rigidity of the beam and this flexural rigidity is defined as the bending moment required to produce a unit radius of curvature produce a unit radius of curvature radius of curvature of one unit the bending moment required to produce a unit radius of curvature is called the flexural rigidity this is about the bending moment thank you